<laughs> All right, guys, what's going on? It's Chris Bataglia, and this is Beans in Business. Today, I'm here with Matias from Republic of Coffee Traders, and we're here to talk all things coffee from El Salvador. So, man, thanks so much for taking the time. No, oh, thanks for thanks for having me. So, man, uh, we just got some beautiful natural coffees from one of the one of the farms you work with. Yeah. Um, how did you, man? Talk us through. Obviously, you you were born in El Salvador. I was. Yeah. So, talk us through how you ended up in the in the coffee business. Well, um, I don't. I didn't end up in the coffee business. I feel like I was born into it in a sense. Uh, like uh, my family, we were from El Salvador. Uh, my family had been in like in like the coffee business for like like at least maybe fifty to a hundred years right and so like i was i grew up going to our farm and uh I have really really fond memories of going up right and, yeah and you know it, it, and so you know we would go up and you know with my cousins and we'd play you know soccer and you know we'd be riding our bikes and we'd see like the trees and like the cherries. And, and so like, for me, like coffee was always like a very family thing and something that was always near to my heart. Uh, and when I was nine, uh, we moved to Canada. Uh, El Salvador is an, uh, incredibly safe country. Yeah. Uh, economic opportunity isn't as great as other countries. And so that's why, you know, my family moved here and, uh, we always knew that coffee was big in Canada, right? Because of the cold. Right? So, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so people and, and people like their good brews here, and you know, specialty coffee was you know taken off, and so, um, and uh, you know, I educated myself a little bit, but n nowhere near as much as I needed to. Uh, yeah, and then in 2020, like after lockdown, it was like, if I don't do this now, I will never do it. So, 2020 was the genesis of you starting to bring in coffee from El Salvador. May 4th, 2020. There you go. That was day one. So, man, so how did you, how did you go about, like, is this coffee from family farms or how did you go about getting this coffee? So, uh, I spoke with my grandfather, right? Because he, he knew all about this and, uh, he referred us to like the mill, like the exporters. Yeah. So yeah. like, it's like the, where the coffee is like processed essentially and made ready for export and, uh, called the Hassal group run by a very close, like family friends of ours called the Salaveria family. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they were like, yeah, you know, we can help you out. We can send you a few shipments. We can export it for you and everything. Freight. Perfect. Um, and so, you know, I didn't really, I, like I had zero, well, I, I started off with like my life savings, which was like not enough to start. Yeah. Fair so, enough. That's how I started uh, yeah. my business too, with not enough money. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you start off when you're too young, when you don't have enough money. You have no idea what you're doing. And you have no <laughs> idea what you're doing. That's how like all great businesses are started, man. And so um, I ordered 15 bags just to like test it out. Yeah. yeah just see like, can I sell this? Yeah. Can like, I make any money doing this? Yeah, exactly. And so it was like, you know, can this be like even viable? And so, you know, and so we did 15 bags. It cost a ton of money to get it here, right? And everything. And so we paid for the uh, shipping and, um, it was so homemade. Like it was so such a shoelace company back then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like, like I received it in my home. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just drop it in the driveway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like, it's like, because they asked me, so what warehouse do you want us to drop it off at? And I'm like, my house. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, because I was like, my, what, what commercial address do you, my house. Uh, so, um, and so they bring it in and uh, I sold it right uh, to a small, uh, like a uh, roastery in Cambridge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so uh, they were really great. They bought bought it all. Uh, and uh, did you make any money? No, I lost money. I, I figured I, I because on 15 money. bags to get it from yeah. El Salvador here, yeah. you probably paid so much to ship yeah. it, right? I, I lost a few thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, or no, I think it was a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. less than that. Bro, there like, you go. That was the learning experience right there. Yeah, yeah. Like I severely underpriced my coffee. Uh, but the coffee was great. And so, you know, next season I was like, okay, 15 bags. All right. We went from 15 bags to 126. Holy shit. So you almost like 10 X yeah. the, the coffee. Yeah. So what, we were, what man, sorry, sorry to cut you off. Yeah. What did you do in between? So you sell the 15 oh, bags yeah. and then you're sitting there like, all right, so all right. that was bad. What should I do yeah. now? Okay, no, well, it wasn't, it was bad. It was just like, okay, like a learning experience. Like, a, and so I was like, okay, like now it was like, okay there's a market for it. Can I process coffees differently? How many do I need to bring in? Can I sell these? Can I pre-sell these? Right. Yeah. And so I was like, just like, I was like, okay, I'll just like order a bunch of different coffees and like bring them here. 
right? And so I was like, okay, all right, let's do that. And because I got the coffee in November, we started delivering it November, December, uh, and then um, the harvest just started. Okay. Because we harvest from like December to like March. And so when you're harvesting, you need to like make these processes, right? Because you need to know, you know, am I going to do a honey and natural or whatever? Yeah, yeah, washed, whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly, okay, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And so I was just like, okay, I'm just going to order like 30 to 40 bags, you know, and maybe if they have something else good, I'll buy it and I'll throw it on a container and I'll receive it. Um, and so I found this amazing warehouse in Montreal called GBH Depot. And shout out to GBH. Shout out to GBH Depot. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so they uh, they they helped me um, like store the coffee, which was big because it's like you know now it's like a hundred bags. Like where are you gonna store it, bro? Have you uh, penetrated the Montreal market at all with I your have, sales? I have. I have. I do, have. do you sell to Zab? No, I know those guys. Oh really? You know what happened? I was in what? Montreal, like Blitz Creek, hungover, like borderline oh, yeah. death. And I walked into one of their stores, uh, Pack Pack Boat, I think it's called. Or Pack Boat. Yeah. yeah, you're saying it much better than me. Fuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I went over there, and they, they uh, we, I just shot the shit with the guys, and it happened to be like that the one of the like main roasters was in that day, and we were just oh, yeah? shoot. I had no idea who I was talking to. I'm like, oh, coffee, blah blah. We're shooting the shit. And he's like, yeah, you want to come to like the expo tomorrow and this and that. Oh, I yeah? didn't go with them, but it was so because I was like, we're there with friends. I was like, oh. gonna like bounce on everyone to go to a coffee expo, but. Yeah. Yeah, it was just so, uh, fuck, I wish I, I probably should have got more information. I would have been able to put yeah. you in contact. But no, yeah, I, I, you know what? I actually wrote to them and I think that they said that they were full for this year, but. Uh, next year, you're good. Yeah, no, but you know what? We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what we can do with them next year, hopefully. But yeah, no, we have a few clients out in Montreal this year. Good, uh, man. Yeah, good so, for you. So yeah, no, you know, Montreal is just like a very different kind of city for coffee. So yeah. Like, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, I've heard it that it's like having good coffees, like, or good coffees higher in the list of priorities for a Quebecer. And for an Ontarian. I, I would agree with that, especially in um like metropolitan markets. Yeah. It's much more like good coffee is table stakes. Yeah. Like you're not gonna making an argument of like, oh, like our coffee's the best is gonna be like it's gonna be tough to claim that. It's gonna be tough to even differentiate yourself on coffee alone there right. because everyone has pretty good coffee. Right. Yeah, no. And so but like um it's like it's like a less elitist kind of thing to have like a really good coffee. Like, oh. I would say like it's kind of like more of like the common folk and these like groceries st- yeah yeah because some of the places in Toronto can be a little pretentious sometimes well y- yeah like like you have like your coffee shops coffee shops that you know they'll serve you you know like good coffees and then you have like your 48 hour anaerobic <laughs> yeah 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 oh yes I understand <laughs> you know what, what you're saying, saying. <laughs> yes yes where yeah. it's like this tastes like fucking plums and I'm doing a turbo shot and I've used fucking these special burrs to grind it. And it's like the oh, general yeah. public is like, what the fuck are you talking about? You pour your, you, your pour over clockwise. Blas- blasphemy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know yeah. Saying? It's just like and so, so much. And yeah. so, you know what, man, at the end of the day, it's like, and, and that's a disconnect between the, like the industry and like the consumer because like yeah. mo- mo- most people like, it's like, it's not like wine. The, the, the wineries have done a, an excellent job in educating the public. Because you know what Merlot is. You know what Cabernet Sauvignon is. Yeah. Right? You know what Chilean, you know, uh, Napa, right? So you know all that stuff, right? But but how many consumers know what Bourbon is or Caturra or Catuay? No, 100%. And I'd say like, well, we have to remember too, I think uh, in the specialty industry to speak to the disconnect, like I see it a lot. People get like lost in the weeds. We have to remember that yeah. most people still are drinking like Folgers and Maxwell House at home. Yeah. Like that is honestly, like those guys are selling coffee like in the millions of metric tons a year. Right. So when we're, con- when we're thinking about like, converting someone to come over and like try something a little different. Yeah. It's, it's very hard to get them there. If we're going from zero, which is I drink Maxwell house yeah. to here's this 48 hour anaerobic process and counterclockwise <laughs> yeah, yeah, circles exactly. and everything. And the person's just like, fuck it. I'm just going back to Maxwell. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's really scary. And it, like it, or it's overwhelming. Right. So like, for example, <laughs> like, you know, I know what you're saying, but, but I feel like, you know, like even like, like a, just like a very good wash coffee. You know, like, okay, start with like a, like a very good wash caturra from Antigua. Yeah, yeah, it's just good. Yeah, It's okay. just coffee that tastes like coffee done well. Right, exactly. But it's like, you know, like besides the tasting notes, right? 
there's like a quality aspect that goes into it, right? Because it's like, you know, this coffee, you know, it's not astringent, right? It's kind of like, it's pleasant. It's not going to leave like a, a film on your mouth. Exactly. It's going to be like cleaner. Yeah, exactly. It's just going to be overall better. You're, you're yeah, exactly. probably going to enjoy it black much more. Ex- or, or you know what? Maybe they still use milk, but it's going to be better. It's going to be better. But you know what? Maybe they're like, you know, I'm still going to put like, you know, a milk or, or a cream in here, right? And you're yeah. like, well, you know, you know, baby steps. That's it. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> do steps. you? Yeah. No, there's like no judgment, especially like at least with us. Like we're like, we definitely like we make a bunch of like fun stuff to like yeah. put in coffee. Like it's, it's about people enjoying it. I guess how they want to enjoy it. Yeah. And, and you know, it's like espresso, right? There's like really no right way to enjoy coffee right it's like you know because like you know if you go back to like italy right people will put in like five sugars one sugar one cream five creams milk no milk just black and like well like can you honestly say that one of those is wrong no well exactly no absolutely not so so you know what man like you like a pour over do your thing that's it yeah it's just like yeah just do your th- i agree yeah no, no no it's like i don't know the uh i i'm not really snobby about it yeah absolutely. exactly exactly and li- like you're still putting it in your you know you know black and decker coffee machine all right sounds good yeah no 100 percent, bro okay two questions for you number one what are you seeing right now as an importer what are you seeing um as far as like pricing i mean obviously inflation is going nuts what are you seeing on your end i mean it's obviously like just like Increase in prices all across the board. Like you shipping is like, more expensive. Coffee is okay. more expensive. Shipping is about two point five times more expensive. Holy shit! Uh, yeah. So just take that in. Uh, like everything, man. Like fertilizers more expensive. Like, uh, um, you know, labor is more expensive. It, and and you say, well, all these things. Well, how does that affect? Them? Well, it's, it affects the bottom line of our suppliers. Oh, one hundred percent. And yeah. so, yeah. And so, you know, and so shipping but we just saw a big decrease in national shipping so okay like before, so what do you mean by that like before it was like shipping like a skit just like southern ontario it was like 900 dollars. now it's like 450 okay so. so that's better in that sense right in in once it's here right and 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 that's what i was talking about that like even a lot of people in the coffee industry don't look at the economic climate of the country yeah because like okay when did specialty coffee really started well let's say 2012 yeah it's a like, yeah a decade ago okay we haven't seen a recession with specialty coffee yes so that's exactly 100 yeah. we haven't seen a recession and so we don't know how the uh the public is going to react to a product which is largely considered a premium exactly yeah i know i've actually had this conversation with um with a like carm with a variety of people like if it got really bad what would you do and i'm like honestly like the nice thing is because we roast yeah. i could like swim downstream and make like uh i could make a cheaper product for the customer yeah. that's still gonna be like pretty decent, decent yeah. but obviously not it's not gonna have like the nuances the you know the some of the things we're able to do right now right. but if it was like tomorrow i need to make a coffee that i can retail for 15 dollars a pound i can reverse engineer that right. whereas um yeah, like some of these guys that have built because a lot of spots like that don't roast. All they do is they just buy from like, you know, the five to ten roasters in Canada that they think are cool. Yeah, and they they all kind of run the same business. Yeah, exactly. Or or buying internationally, like oh, from like yeah. roasters in like Europe. Yeah, and, I, and I've seen that in a few coffee shops, and I think that that's just. I'm like, first of all, support your local like roast quality because it's not going to get better if you don't support it. That's true. And second of all, it's like, okay, how much does FedEx cost? It's it's just, bro, it's very gimmicky. Like, I've gotten, um, I was thinking about doing, uh, like, an international roaster series where I, like, did a podcast with them digitally and, like, this and that. So, I looked at, like, Square Mile out in England. Uh, yeah, James Hoffman. <laughs> yeah, obviously, that was the first one. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I'll get, like, maybe I'll get his coffee. So, I got, like, the commercial price list and shit, but I'm like, man, like, I'm not going to make any fucking money on this, really. Coffee shops don't make money. No, they're terrible businesses to be in. The, and the problem is this. Like, you're selling a low-value product with huge overhead. Yeah, and you're competing with giants. Because at the end of the day, like, for everyone in here who maybe owns a specialty shop or thinks about it, you're not competing. I'm not competing with the specialty cop down the, down the street. I'm not yeah. competing with them. I'm competing with fucking Starbucks, bro. Right. I'm competing with Tim Hortons. Like, I want a piece of their right. pie. But I, I feel like Tim Hortons and Starbucks are very, very different businesses. And their clients are very, very, very different. 100%. But Starbucks, I feel like, is more so... Like, if you could capture Starbucks market with yeah. your coffee business, yeah. 
I mean, I guess it depends on what, what you're in it for, right? If you're in it to build a big business, then you have to kind of look at taking market share off those guys. Well, I would say this. I would say that Starbucks is like a very good introduction if you're coming from like Des Moines. Yes. And so like- it's a gateway drug. It, it, that's exactly what I was <laughs> going to say. I was, I was like, that word yeah. wasn't. And so I was like, and so like, because you can much more easily take- a customer from Starbucks and from like Tim Hortons because if you're going to Tim Hortons, bro, it's it's convenience. Yeah. yeah. So I actually know people who worked corporate at Tim Hortons, yeah. and they're like the only thing they care about is drive through wait time. That's oh, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything's to optimize wait time. How fast can we get them in out? That's yeah, that's exactly. it. Where Starbucks, like I know another person who works corporate at Starbucks, and they were saying like, yeah, like they bring in new coffees to Cup right. Weekly. It's right. a, it's more coffee centric there, exactly. even at the corporate level. I was at a Starbucks in in Oakville the other day, and like I saw some like. Pretty like like I wouldn't put him in a specialty coffee shop, but interesting. Like, but like I was like, okay, it was like a like an Antigua, I think it was, yeah, right? or a kosher from Ethiopia, yeah. And so I'm like, okay, so you know, you know, most people won't know what Yerga Chef is, but if they see it in a Starbucks, right? It's like you know the amount of you know uh, traffic that you get there. You know, maybe you'll get more pickups. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what Yerga Chef. I know what Antigua is. I know what yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, man, I, what well, was funny, it's funny you bring up Antigua. We carry a Guatemala Antigua and it is like one of our best sellers just because it's, it's so clean, approachable, good. Yeah. It's just like very, like when people are like coming in and they're like first time, I'm not going to sell them. Like I have a, a honey processed Peru right now. Yeah. That's like pretty wild. Yeah. But I'm just like, yeah, start there and like, let me know how you like it. And they come back. Like, that was amazing. It's like, that was sick. Right. And, and you know what? It's not even just like for beginners. Like I like those kind of coffees. Like, you know what, man? Like this coffee that we sold, uh, Cerro, Cerro La Renas. Right. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. We'll rip it up later. But go ahead. Say what you're going to say. Okay, so this is like a coffee that it's like, I, I was actually in another shop and they told me like people come and ask for it by name. This coffee. Because it's so good. Yeah. Bro. Natural processed coffees are fucking no, awesome. Well, well, it's not a natural. It's a pulp natural. Yeah. So it's like, it's a little different than like a full natural because here it's like more closely to like a honey than like a natural. Yes. Yes. But like, it's like, it's like, this is like what good Central American coffee is. It has this like kind of like fudge, deep chocolate note to it. Like it's not just dark chocolate. It's like deep chocolate. Like it's like, like a very like rich, like, like okay. It's a like cake batter. Yeah. Like chocolate cake batter. Think about that. And then it's like, it's like, then it like, as it cools down, it goes into like plum. It's like this kind of like purple plum flavors, stone fruit. And then it goes into like ginger and like higher acidity, brighter notes, like orange blossom, things like that. And so this is like what great coffee from Central America is. Man, I'm pumped. Yeah, man. I can't wait. And when we cupped like some of the stuff that you brought, it was amazing. So that's why I was like excited to do some stuff. But I sent you the, uh, the Buena Vista, the cognac. <laughs> yeah, that was incredible. The, the cognac coffee. <laughs> yeah, that was, no, man, that, all the coffees you sent me were really good. So that's why I was like, yeah, whatever you suggest for this one, like, let's yeah. rip it up. No, I, I, I suggested this one for you guys because I know you guys are Italian, big into espresso. Yeah. So I was like, this is like our go-to like espresso offering. It's beautiful. And it doesn't like let anybody down. So I was like, okay, well, I'll go with a safe bet. Perfect. So that's good. So for everyone watching, if you're, um, if you're going to buy this coffee, you could probably do filter. You could probably do, you're going to be able to do espresso. It's going to be fucking this, pretty versatile. Yeah, no. And this is like a really good education coffee because you can't really mess this one up because it's like, it, like you can like mess it up in the brewing and like, you're still going to get like a, like a drinkable cup of coffee. So if, like, if you're learning to get into specialty coffee, I would suggest this coffee. There we go, guys. You heard it here first. So there, that's fucking, no, that's awesome. And yeah, I'm pumped man. about it. No, I, I really like it. No, that's I'm, I'm absolutely <laughs> stoked. So, what are you um? What's what are you guys doing? What's what are you up to now with with the way things are going? Uh, I mean, it's just you know knocking on doors, right? It's yeah. mostly it. and getting the word out because like especially like you know like we haven't been around for like too long, so you know people don't like really know us that much. So like you know there's other like you know more prestigious importers here in Canada. You know we've been around for like you know ten years, eight years, and like people still like don't really know Republica and like what we're about or like. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so like, that's been the main thing right now. It's just been like getting the word out about who we are and, uh, getting people to try these coffees. Once they try it, it's, it's over. Yeah, no, exactly. So you just <laughs> got to get coffee in their, in their cup and you're good, yeah. man. Do you have any industry 
predictions for the next coming year. So like we said, specialty coffee has not really seen a recession. Yeah. Because I'm thinking like who's like the OGs of the specialty coffee game in Canada? Yeah. Like on the east side, I'd say like Pilot's probably one of the OGs. Pilot's good. And they, they buy our coffee. So. And they do. Yeah. Um, and they started what, 2010? 2012, I believe. Yeah, so this is what I'm saying. Like, no one's seen a recession, really. Yeah. Ex- no, and But, yeah, exactly. We haven't, like, we have gone through this, like, time of, like, endless economic growth. Yeah, and endless like, pros- people, prosperity. Yeah. yeah. And, like, people say, well, COVID. I'm like, okay, but COVID wasn't like that because then everybody had, like, checks for, like, $5,000 right after. Well, so. oh, that's the, th- that's <laughs> the thing, man. Disposable income. No, COVID was, like, insane for us because, like, we, we never shut down any of our yeah. stores and people were just... We were just throwing around money. It was wild. Like no one was working. Everyone was spending money. Exactly. It was well, cr- yeah. It was crazy. And then, and then and then people were saying, "So do you think that this is like gonna like cause inflation?" Like and then it's like right now it's like yeah it is. So oh yeah, I I, I it's man, like, it's all the money printing. <laughs> well yeah, when money goes into the money supply, yeah, right? Because exactly. this wasn't like money printing to pay off like economic debts. This was like went into the general public's money supply. Exactly. And then you throw in like labor shortages and this and yeah. that, and of course, it, like and the things that the, the deflationary measures that the Bank of Canada is, is using, it's like raising interest rates by like zero point five points every time. It's like it's like trying to stop a freight train by like just having people line up on the tracks. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Insane. Yeah, but no, like, it's not gonna do anything. No, no, it's not that it's not gonna do anything. It's just a very bad way to stop inflation. Well, it will work, but it's just too too little. Too little, too late. Like oh, yeah, then, absolutely. But then I guess they have to man. They're trying to manage like killing the economy because obviously, if you just jump inflation up like five percent overnight, like there'll be chaos in the streets. So yeah, exactly. No, absolutely. And um, but my like you were asking about my industry predictions, and the thing is, I'm not gonna make a prediction because I don't know. Yeah. But that is my prediction. You don't know. I don't know, and so but I can tell you what to do. I can tell you it's like in order to prepare. If I were any roaster. Yeah pre-contract all your coffees from now on man because see here's the thing like the prices that we like inflation is probably not going to stop for another three to four months at least 100 percent. and so i would say pre-contract as much as you can for next year you know build yourself you know some nice contracts with you know preset prices um because you don't know what the future is going to look like and i would say go for more like like less interesting coffees and i would say stuff that you're going to be able to sell and sell easily yeah to anyone exactly and so I would say buy more wash coffees, buy more um, pulp naturals, less naturals, and uh, just keep going with some high quality coffees. Always stay on the high quality road, but you know, be careful about the pricing. So and make sure that you have coffee supply because next year you you don't know. Like there was just another frost in Brazil, man, and so that that's gonna drive coffee prices up. One hundred percent. Like fifteen, I think it like the other day it went up eight percent in the New York market. Oh my God. Yeah. So, that, and that's like C market prices. Exactly. That's not even like. Yeah. And, and, you know, we say, well, we're in specialty. We don't manage C prices. It's like, well, yeah, but there's still an effect. They're, they're correlated, 100%. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So, entrepreneurship yeah. wise, um, what, like, why did you want to do this? Why did you want to do your own thing versus you're a young guy? You could have done a million things. Why did you want to start your own business, especially in an industry that's not. I mean, it's not necessarily like super straightforward. It's not easy. Like it's, it's definitely not like a license yeah. to print money. So why? Why did we go to the moon, man? That's it. Why did we cross the Atlantic? <laughs> it's like, it's like, you know, it's like what John F. Kennedy said, you know, we don't do things because they're easy, but because they're hard. Right. And in that, you know, difficulty of situations, you grow. And, you know, it, it like, like stop looking at things like problems and looking more at them like challenges that you can solve. And I've always been like that, man. Like I've always wanted to start my own business. So it was always like that. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I would go to like our farm, our beach house in El Salvador and we had all these like big palm trees, right? And so I would say, okay. And I went one time and I was like, okay, let's cut some down. So I brought it back to the city and I put it in a cooler and went door to door selling coconuts. And that was it. In the, and like, I'm like, and I found it so incredibly rewarding. I mean, when I was like 12, I would mow lawns for my neighbors, right? And they like, grow grass in El Salvador, like here, like same. No, 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 have... not here, not in El Salvador. I was here. here. Yeah, yeah was, sorry, 12. Yeah, yeah you said yeah, 12. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I would just like go door to door. Question Do people have lawns in El Salvador, though? Is uh, that yeah, like a normal yeah. thing? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, some of them. Like, some of them, like, won't have like front lawns. Some of them will just have like back gardens. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 
but yeah, people like like people like live in houses, man. Like no, I figured they lived in houses. I didn't know if it was like a thing to have like yeah. you know we have like a lawn. I didn't know if that was like a, a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People have gardens, man. People have grass. Some of them do. Some of them don't. Some have patio, just like here, man. Just straight patio. Yeah, yeah fuck. You no, know, you put a couple a couple nice lawn chairs. You know? There you go. You're living the dream over there. It's December and like you're out there, you know. Yeah, it doesn't really get yeah. that cold there. No, I it assume. Doesn't. It just rains like crazy, man. Is that, is that <laughs> what winter is there? Just yeah, straight man. rain? It's just like rain every day. Like there was one time where, where they like shut down the schools because it was just like raining so much. Holy crap, man. That's yeah, fucking man. wild. So do you still have family there? Yeah, man. Like my whole family's there. Just you guys left. Well, yeah, I have like some aunts and uncles here. But like, yeah, it's like my whole family's there. Is any of your family in the coffee business still? Uh, I have a few uncles that are like you know, more, more distant uncles, but like still family. Nice. Like, they're still in it. So... Yeah, man. So what do you guys think, do you expect to ever work with like, do you plan on working with farmers outside or importers outside of uh, El Salvador eventually? Uh, maybe we'll see what's in the works. Yeah, all right. So because, that's, yeah, that's what you're cooking maybe, up, eh? Maybe some Antiguas next year. Oh, okay. So that's what keeps bringing up the Antigua. There you go. Yeah. We got some Guatemala imports coming. Yeah, actually, my, my family actually spent a lot of time in Guatemala. So that's why we, that's like our next like potential stop. Potential but, move. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like, it's like still in the works, but yeah. Nice, man. So what's the, what's the end goal for Republica? What do you want it to be? Listen, man, I don't know. <laughs> now, like, like I would say this, I would say like, it's to like, the end goal was always to bring really good coffees or bring our coffees into Canada. Yeah. yeah. But like, you know, as to, you know, like I had somebody else ask me, so are you going to stay in the Americas? Or are you going to stay in Central America? And it's like, I don't know yet, but like, I know what I'm doing right now. And so, you know, I think that right now the next step would be like another Central American country. Yeah. Am I ever going to get into like, are we ever going to like Rwanda's Burundi's? I don't know. But like right now we're just so focused on bringing in such good coffees from El Salvador that it's like those things are like not even in our mirror. Yeah. So that's it right now. Just focus on bringing in high quality coffees and that's it. Take it a day at a time. Yeah, man. It's like, you know, people like, you know, it's like people are always dreaming, right? And saying, you know, in 10 years and five years, it's like, okay, but what about like, Three months from now. I know what you're saying. Yeah, have a short-term plan and like just find out the long-term vision, but you got to have the short-term tactics. Yeah, you got you to be able to vision things, envision things, right? Like, you know, like you got to have vision because if you don't have vision, you're not going to make it out as an entrepreneur. No, no. You have to have like some sort of like down there, I want to be X, Y, Z, yeah. right? Because otherwise, yeah, you'll never, you'll quit. Yeah, it's like, you know, th there's like this like, I, like I, 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 I don't know where I saw this quote, but I saw it and it was dream big, work hard. Yeah. And, and I'm like, it. and I'm like, like, I'm not saying that that's like the secret formula for entrepreneurship, but I can tell you that if you don't follow that formula, you won't become successful. No, exactly. That's not going to like make you successful, but not doing it is going to make you unsuccessful exactly. for sure. It's yeah. Like, I can tell you that if you don't use it, you won't be successful, but I can't tell you that if you use it, you will be successful. Exactly. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. yeah. No, a hundred percent, man. Yeah. Uh, do you have any like ambitions for like yourself or like employees because right now it's, yeah. you're a one-man army right exactly yeah so like do you do you want to have like a, a space one day where you're like do you want to have your own warehouse like do you dream about that shit i mean it's like you know eventually but you know yeah it's like yeah eventually it's to grow more and every year we're growing and and i don't say you know like my goal isn't to have employees right my yeah. goal is to keep bringing in really good salvadoran coffee and if i need an employee to do that I will have an employee or I will get an employee, but you know, you know, start with the end and goal, like, like with the end in mind. Right. Yeah. And so, so as long as you're bringing in good coffee, you're going to be exactly, you know, like, needed. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. Do you have anybody in the industry that you like admire as far as like other importers or anything like that? That I admire or that like, I don't know. Is there anyone like, I feel like I always like look at other coffee companies or even businesses like cross channel. And I'm like, wow, they really did that. Like, well, I need to like execute on that idea. Well, I would say this, man, anytime that like, it's a young guy or young person, like I'm motivated by that. So like you, man, like, you know, like what you guys are doing here. And when you told me your story about like, how, you know, you started out when you were like, what? 22, 19, 19, yeah. 19. Yeah. So you started when you were yeah, pretty young. And so I was like, okay, well that's pretty inspiring. Like this guy started out and like you did something that was harder than I did, right? Because a coffee shop is not the same as importing. Like there, it, like a coffee shop is so much harder. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts to like, uh, yeah, running the roastery, running physical locations. Exactly. I deal with staff. Like staff is like, 
hardest part. We have a great team. I love you guys, but it is <laughs> no, it is like you just deal with shit with staff that like you never thought you'd deal with. Paychecks. Like, and yeah, HR, yep. and payroll, HR. And you know, there's a problem yeah. with this. This happened. Yeah, man. I, last minute, I need fucking seven weeks off. You some, know what I mean? It's some like, oh, it's, some customer came in, threw a coffee at me. Yeah, thank God that's never happened. But oh, really, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, thank God. God that would be terrible. Yeah, yeah. I've heard the, like pretty like during COVID, like cup shops were being like, it's hard, blast. bro. Like honestly, HR and stuff is like so so challenging. I'd say that's like yeah. the hardest thing to scale. Right? Is like having good yeah. people. And it's like, where do you find good people? And I'm like, it, instead of trying to like look for the best employee, it's like grab somebody that has a lot of potential and train them, right? Yeah. I would feel like that's better. I don't know. But like, I would say that that's my theory. No, I, I agree. Like, it's easier to train. Like, the thing is you have to hire for, I'd say, personality. Yeah. And then, because you can train technical skills. You can teach anyone how to make a latte. Yeah. Um, but it's, you gotta hire someone who's going to be like good with customers who wants to do it. So yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, because especially like, like if you're not like a customer service minded person in coffee, it's like, it's not going to work or don't be in a cafe be it, like right here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can be non customer service minded while you like pack beans or something for sure, but not face to face. And no. I look, man, like I don't blame people like talking to like hundreds of people every day. It's s- stressful. Yeah. It can, it for can some be people, for some yeah. people. Yeah. I don't because I'm too extroverted, but like, like I've no, I've met people who are like very like introverted and who like, you know, don't like to do that. Right. And so it's like, okay, well, instead of saying, okay, well, you're not going to be able to come and work for us. It's like, okay, well, what can we do for you? Okay. It's like, well, roasting is like a pretty solitary activity. Yeah. Yeah. Roasting could be packing. Like there's like other shit that you could, if you want to be around it. Yeah. Put in some headphones. That's it. Do your thing. Yeah, exactly. You know, don't have anybody come bother you. That's <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Work in isolation, man. Exactly. Right, bro. Okay, let's wrap it up. Where uh, where can people find you if anyone wants to like do business with you? Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you can find me on our website at uh, www.republicacoffeetraders.com. Yeah, I'll link it below. Don't worry. Yes. Don't worry if it's .ca.com. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, you can find us on Instagram at republica underscore coffee traders, and um, you can find us at any one of our roaster partners. Yeah. Shout out to 416 Coffee. Yeah, it'll be right here. Uh, by the time this is airing, the coffee will be out. So, yeah, guys, fucking get it. And, man, thank yeah, you so man. much for taking the time. Hey, hey, no, this was good. No, no, it was my pleasure, man. It was my pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for having me.